Nikki here and welcome to the Bond Room Unlocked, whereby I take an item from this 27 year old Bond collection and relate it to one of the films that we know and love. Now, are you a member of the Facebook group? What? No? Then you don't know what you're missing because as a member, you have your say in what I talk about on this channel. And the members have chosen the 1985 film A View to a Kill as my topic for this episode. So what better way to start than to look at this final Roger Moore outing as Bond and looking at the character of Christopher Walking's Zorry. You're being used, Mr. Howe. Uh, hello. hello. We've had a break in here. City Hall, Office 306. Come at once. What have they done? You discharged her. <laughs> so she and her accomplice came here to kill you. Then they set fire to the office to conceal the crime. But they were trapped in the elevator. And perished in the flames. But that means I would have to be dead. Initially, David Bowie was cast as the ruthless industrialist Max Zorin. Producers wanted a big rock star name with a screen presence to take on this villainous role after the very lukewarm reception that Octopussy got previously two years before. And to start off with, Bowie took on the role, it fit in with his musical schedules, everything was good. But then he had a change of heart, citing that he didn't want to spend five months watching his uh, stunt double fall off a cliff. So instead Bowie jumped off that cliff and after Sting declined, it was over to actor Christopher Walken to take on the role. And he had a very Bowie look to him if you look at the Let's Dance video. Now, was this a homage to the many what-ifs and what could-have-beens? Hmm. Interesting enough, Bowie was cast as the Goblin King in the cult classic film Labyrinth in 1986, so he did get to play a villain after all. OK, before we dig deeper into the character of Max Zorin, I want to share with you a piece of memorabilia from my collection that's related to our film A View to a Kill. And here I have a VHS videotape of A View to a Kill. And you're probably thinking, well, what's so special about that? We all have those in our collections. We just don't have a video to play it on. Well, exactly. Many of us don't have a video player to play these on now. So if we just turn the videotape over, we can see there is a battery pack that's been added to the back of the tape. And if I click the little switch on the side and we turn it back over, we now have a snazzy green nightlight. So yes, this is a great way to upskill an older item and make it into a, a something completely different. And you can get these from um, realfilmcells um, gmail.com. That's realfilmcells at gmail.com. Um, and you can get them for many, many, many different films. So yeah, so it's just a nice snazzy little item. Christopher Walken, a prolific actor of film, TV and stage, as well as being an accomplished dancer, was cast. Now, he has won many awards in his career. Particularly note the Oscar that he won for Supporting Actor in the 1978 film The Deer Hunter. I mean, if you can't get a rock star, then why not get an Academy Award winner, right? And to be fair, Walken absolutely nails the part. And he, he absolutely hitched crazed on the head. Tom Pickup from the Really 007 podcast totally agrees. Zorin is in my top three Bond baddies, alongside Scaramanga and Sanchez. And Christopher Walken is just a hilarious actor, a hilarious screen presence and everything he's in. But in this, I think you need a, a genuine one-on-one -on -one villain Octopussy is unbelievable, so is Fury's only, but they they had sort of complicated villains where there was two, almost, two main villains. So it goes back to that main Barry, who you think is a megalomaniac, he could take over the world. He's an absolute psychopath, and that's one of the best things about him that Roger Moore says to Stacey, doesn't he? Don't worry, Stacey, he's a psychopath. 
and you really get that sense. He's funny, he's very likeable for a baddie, and there's some unusual ticks, of course, that Christopher Walken, only he could do, such as the sort of, when it when he finds out that Mayday is going to go to bed with Bond, he sort of almost, you know, <laughs> he's in his karate gear, judo, whatever, to start with, and then the brilliant. And then his, his sort of look to, he does a similar one to make sure that guy is chopped up in the, that horrible propeller, which is awful, just like, really scary that and his face when he's shooting all those people in the mine it's disgusting it's absolutely awful but again so iconic so likable in an evil way i know that sounds weird no it's not weird at all not to the bond community it's not and as tom pointed out walken doesn't even have to say a word to pull off this part a smirk here a laugh there when he downplays the character, he's at his most deadliest. And his eloquent and definitive voice really helps this. Killing Tibbet was a mistake. I'm about to make the same mistake twice. My department know I'm here. When I don't report, they'll retaliate. If you're the best they have, they'll more likely try to cover up your embarrassing incompetence. Don't count on it, Zara. <laughs> you amuse me, Mr. Bond. Well, it's not mutual. Let's hear from Matt from the Shaken and Not Stirred Facebook group. Hello everybody, it's Agent Matt from Shaken and Not Stirred and I'm here today to talk about Max Zorin. Um, so yeah, thank you very kindly Vicky for letting me do this. Now, Max Zorin to me is a fantastic Bond villain. He's, one of, he's up there as one of the best. You know, A View to a Kill, not many people like it. I actually really do enjoy the film and that's purely because of Chris Walken's portrayal of Max Zorin. He really does now the part, the psychotic, crazy villain. He's one of the, probably the most psychotic villains of all time. The one-liners that he produces are absolutely fantastic. And what a fantastic foil for Roger Moore's Bond. Can't imagine it working for any other Bond apart from Roger, who really does, they complement each other really, really well, and he does a fantastic job there. One of my favourite scenes is when uh, Bond, as, you know, Sir John Smythe is... Uh, you know, trying to buy a horse and Zorin's at the computer and he's typing in, he's like, right, let's find out who he is. Or he comes up, James Bond goes, oh, you know, and he comes up, streaming that, and he's just like laughing, he goes, oh, you know, it's brilliant. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't phase it, Zorin. He goes out and sets a trap for him, a horse racing trap. And he actually captures him and then he kills him. It's absolutely genius. Born with a genius IQ as part of a Nazi experiment um, and with psychopathic side effects Zorin is dangerously unpredictable and Walken does this so well as a ruthless industrialist of great wealth if things do not fall his way there are always consequences I propose to end the domination of Silicon Valley and leave us in control of that market. What is it you propose? Project Main Strike, for which each of you will pay me $100 million. $100 million? Plus half our net income under an exclusive marketing agreement with me. These are outrageous terms. Well, perhaps a, a, a demonstration would convince you. I want no part of it, thank you. As you wish. Hmm. The rest of our discussion must, of course, be confidential. Would you wait outside? If you'd like me to, yes. Excuse me. Thank you. Mayday, I provide you with a drink. This way. I love a board meeting scene in a Bond film. It's one of the things that I really look out for. And you always know that someone around that table has attended their last meeting. Remember the boys from Goldfinger in Operation Grand Slam? Gas to death? Spectre? Mr. Hinks does some eyeball crushing? And what about Thunderball? That was an electrifying experience in itself. 
And there are so many that we can mention that even director Tim Burton liked this idea. If we can't do business, why, we'll just shake hands and that'll be it. Yeah? Here. <laughs> oh, there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> David Bowie could have got the part, maybe should have got it for, for some Bond fans, but I'm actually kind of glad he didn't because Chris Walken really run with the characters or really done a fantastic job the one-liners he produced were sublime you know when bond's on the uh air balloon oh this will hurt him more than me he just crashes him into one of the uh, aerial poles on, on top of the building it's just or, or the golden gate bridge and all the rest of it he, it's just unbelievable you know um and he pulls it off with great panache and a great kind of energy even in Hal's office when, when he goes oh you know these two are broken in all the rest of it and how goes, well, I must be, yeah, dead. And just shoots him, you know. Very simple, but very effective. And, and the famous line, intuitive improvisation is the secret of genius. That's how he says. So, yeah, you know, I could, I could speak all day about him. Um, fantastic character. Really, really well portrayed by Chris Walken. And if anything, it makes A View to a Kill a much better film because of it. So, yeah, like always, love to hear all your thoughts. See you later. Thanks, Matt totally agree he's no doubt the best thing about this film many thought that roger was too old and that some of the acting was poorly executed you can check all this out on a previous episode of mine look out for episode 25 was roger moore too old in a view to a kill and finally you know the i mean his death i still rate that as along with license to kill the best finale of any bond film the really awkward fight on top the golden gate bridge and that you know, it's not a sort of unrealistic fight. It's difficult. They're barely hanging on to the, you know, the side of this bridge. And the way he sort of realises he's going to die, he finds it slightly funny at first, which everyone remembers the laugh, but then there's a sheer look of terror and the scream, which is just unbelievable. And he's just a, a class actor in a brilliant Bond film that I love that really seems to be... I don't know, hated on by certain Bond fans for some reason. And I think it's brilliant. And that performance from Christopher Walken and Zoran will, it will stand the test of time for sure. Yes, it was a memorable scene for a memorable villain. But I have a query about his supposed death. To start off with, he fell into water. Yes, he fell from a great height. But he didn't hit anything on the way down. There were no obstacles that he uh, could have caught. There were no rocks that he landed on. So, in effect, could Zorin have come back? I'd love to have known your thoughts on this because it's one that I always sort of think about when I watch this particular scene. So, that's it for this episode on our brief look at Max Zorin. Um, if you like this episode, then please give it an MI6 stamp of approval and click on the notifications below. And why not subscribe to the channel? It makes sense. You don't miss out on any of the further missions. And you can also find myself on Facebook at The Bond Room Unlocked and also with extra content on Instagram too. My thanks go out to Tom from the Really 007 podcast and Matt from the Shaken Not Stirred Facebook group for their thoughts on Zorin. He's certainly one of the better villains in the franchise. Thank you for watching. <laughs>